let's explore the Port of St. Thomas and get lost in the bars and restaurants of Old San Juan, Puerto Rico, aboard Carnival Magic's eight-day exotic Caribbean cruise. Come along. Looks like a yucky day pulling into St. Thomas. You can barely see land over there. It'll be interesting to see if um, this weather holds or if it's gonna clear up. It might be an indoor day, we shall see. Yeah, it's been a pretty rainy trip. Um, often, often on rain as we um, have been sailing. Um, we'll see if St. Thomas is a full washout. Usually I ask my meteorologist friend, uh, shout out to Weatherproof. Um, what the weather's gonna be like on these trips, and I totally forgot to do that this trip. <laughs> uh, so, um, it'll be interesting to see. Maybe if I get connection today, I'll reach out and see what the next couple ports of call, Grand Turk and San Juan, are gonna be like. Um, I like to compare his weather forecast as, um, don't like saying this, but frequently that he's right. <laughs> so. Uh, all right, off to get coffee. Here's a tip. There's also coffee in the steakhouse, deck five aft. I've previously been to St. Thomas by flying in. Uh, this is my first time cruising into St. Thomas. However, I had work to do on this day, so I got off the ship briefly to look around the port, grab some lunch, and head back on. Right. So this is my first time uh, coming to St. Thomas via cruise ship. I have flown into St. Thomas before. This is unique, the beautiful carnival magic behind me. So I'm just gonna explore the port a little bit before getting back on the ship. Here are the taxi rates for St. Thomas. Several buildings. I have shops and pretty walkable around the ports. All right, so they had fast and efficient service. And they also have free Wi-Fi here at Delhi Deck. So just FYI, I am very close to the cruise port. All right, so I got some more stuff to do. So I'm about to get back on the ship, but I just wanted to get off and stretch my legs a bit uh, and see what it was like to cruise into St. Thomas since I have um, flown here before. I've never been over here by the cruise port. Um, so yeah, hopefully next time I will carve out more time and space to explore, get to the beach. Um, but I tend to try to use um, any time away from work wisely. And today was just one of those days I was like, I can use this time off in a different manner. Um, so. Got a quick bite in St. Thomas and back on the ship to keep the work day going. Here's a tip. If you really enjoyed the Mississippi catfish that was on today's Thursday, Wednesday on the Magic, they will have the fried Mississippi catfish on the buffet the following lunch. They'll have the fried Mississippi catfish on the buffet the following lunch on that Thursday afternoon. So you can get it two days in a row on the Magic. As you may have heard, Carnival has updated its menus, and that catfish had me in a chokehold, um, and it also seems they serve some of the dinner menus at lunch the next day. Here is dinner, and then it was time for one more show before wrapping up the day. All right, another great dinner with my table mates. Um, Carnival paired me up with some, good more, some more good people. So now I'm heading over to the Motown Review, and y'all, I still don't know if I'm gonna make it. <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna make it to the uh, what o'clock, 10 o'clock, rock and glow. These eyes are heavy, child. So, okay, over to the Motown review. By Mr. Barry Gordy in 1959. He borrowed $800 from his family to start Motown. And in today's money, I, I looked it up, it's $8,000. $466.91, can you say it? All right, just got to San Juan, Puerto Rico, and it is raining. <laughs> so, hopefully the rain stops and we can 
get to a couple places. My goal for today is I have previously been to Puerto Rico and I tried Mofongo and it was gross to me. So my goal is to try, give Mofongo another try and hope that it's a better experience. But first, we need this weather to clear up. If you come to this pink building here, that is the information center and they will give you a free map that has all the things laid out. Um, it's right up the hill from the Walgreens, so not too far. Um, and you can really navigate a lot of this by yourself. See here, she marked up my map and gave me several places to go. So I think I'm not gonna go to the floor. I don't think I have the shoes for it, but I am gonna go to Laises and Barichina. Um, Cause I think I do have the shoes for that. <laughs> okay, so pro tip, if you can find the visitor center, stop there because a lot of the places that, you know, these tours that are charging you 20 bucks, etc. cetera, um, they're gonna give you all the, all the things for free. Uh, and if you feel like you're decent with the map or you don't mind getting lost a little bit, just, you know, jump in here. So, all right, I'm coming up on the cross street, so I'm gonna look to see if I can figure out where I'm going. And the beautiful part about it, if I don't find it on the map, I'm gonna find it on Google Maps. <laughs> Stumbled upon this church here. Usually I would go in, but I just remembered I have on a crop top. So I probably, Shouldn't go in here. <laughs> um, I usually like to go to churches. Something worth noting, if you sail into San Juan on Carnival, you will get there pretty early. However, old San Juan does not come alive until about 10 or 11 a.m. So there were about two hours that I had to kill time just kind of walking through the streets before restaurants and bars would open. I stopped in Spiga Cafe, which is a coffee shop in Old San Juan, to grab a pastry. Um, I'm here doing a makeshift tour where I'm literally just gonna keep stumbling into random places until it's time to get back on the ship. <laughs> All of the recommendations that I got to go into places aren't open until 11, so I'm gonna have to um, uh, just kind of make do. I probably, I would say, tip bring some tennis shoes in the San Juan. I have on my Tevas and I just feel like I might slip. Mm, there's some some rubber at the bottom of those soles though, so but they just don't feel as super secure as my sneakers would be walking around San Juan. After a quick breakfast at Spiga Cafe, it was time to consider continue to do some traveling or exploring around old San Juan on foot. Clean. Everywhere I go, it seems like someone is sweeping or power washing the sidewalks. Um, so yeah, very clean. It's early here. Feel totally safe just walking around wondering, getting lost. So just trying to kill time until some of the recommended restaurants open up. Seems like most of the things that you want to eat or drink don't open until 11 a.m. or later. So just an FYI. I'm 
After walking to the right of the fountain area, I stumbled upon the San Juan Gate. Bunch of pigeons and cats. Hilly, <laughs> very hilly. <sighs> Slow and easy does it, huh? After navigating the hills of San Juan, I finally found a bar to pop into for a cold drink. Okay, so I came into this place called um, Maryland. Maryland's place. Uh, it's off of San Francisco Street, uh, and it's a very quiet, cute place. But the passion fruit mo mojito, I'm sorry, passion fruit by Capsinia, is very strong and tasty. And oh, this is a picture of Marilyn Monroe behind me. And the bartender was very nice to translate some of the things that were going on the news here. Um, including that there is apparently a bus for selling alcohol after 1 a.m. So a little kind of sweet moment of a bar that I just happened to see walking by as I'm making my way um, to the next stop. My final stop was Raices, a restaurant that the information center recommended. I am so excited. Um, this place just feels original, uh, traditional. It doesn't seem like a lot of tourists. It looks like people who know what they know they're supposed to be in here. So already just off of the air condition and the feeling of authenticity, recommend Raices. Here is the menu at Raices, and I will say it was very robust with lots of choices of authentic Puerto Rican food. So the waiter recommended three things. He recommended the skirt steak, he recommended the lobster, and he recommended the red snapper. So um, if you are interested in coming to Raices, <laughs> uh, try those three things that were recommended. One thing about traveling solo is people are very nice. So um, the table next to me let me try some of their appetizers. I don't know what this is, but it's good. <laughs> This one I was happy to try, it has meat in the middle, but it's not my favorite. But happy to try it for free. Whatever this flat thing is, get it. This is La Clayito. It's like codfish in it. It's good. Really good. La Clayito. Alright, my sangria has arrived. Yes. Mm -hmm. My sangria has arrived and you get this thing. And you get this. And I'm gonna do like this. <laughs> Save a couple more. <laughs> a couple of these guys. And there we go. My sangria 
It's not my favorite, I don't think. It's kind of strong and surfy. Mm. So yeah, if you are in a rush, don't come here. Uh, come have a couple drinks, relax. It's going to take a while, but everyone makes it seem like it's worth it. So pack your patience. Okay, so I decided to do skirt steak with the mofongo on the side just because I'm not a big fan of mofongo the last time I had it. So maybe having it on the side might be a little better for me. We'll see. Okay, and as I remember, I am still not a fan of the mofongo, but I do like, I do like their um, yellow rice and beans, rice and peas with yellow rice instead of the white rice. And I just do my skirt steak in there. That's good. All right, and so that was Puerto Rico. Um, we had a short port stop today at 8.30 to 1. It's time to get back on the ship. Um, basically just went around and tried a few bars and restaurants. Um, nothing too in-depth, but had some decent food. All righty, I'm probably going to wrap today unless something more interesting happens. But this is COC. Thanks for traveling with me. Like, comment, subscribe. And I will see you in the next video.